Have you ever wanted to try a new game, but your computer isn't good enough to run it? I've spent six years optimizing games and recently developed a new kind of lighting that doesn't need a powerful graphics card. By lighting, I mean these beams of sunlight. There are two ways that most games render them, but they each have their flaws. I've developed a third approach that looks identical to the second, but runs 70 times faster. The first method creates these beams of light using the skybox. This works by rendering the skybox to two textures. Normally the fragment shader only outputs one colour to the screen, but we also want to save the bright parts of the skybox to another texture. This is done using this brightness cutoff value. It only lets colours through if they're brighter than the cutoff. Now we can blur this texture away from the sun to create streaks of light. Then we can overlay this on top of the main texture. This runs pretty quickly, but as soon as you look away from the sun, the beams disappear. If you want them to stay on screen, you need to use the second approach. When you're playing a 3D game, everything is still rendered to a flat 2D surface. That's because your monitor is a flat 2D screen. So how can we draw 3D beams of light over a 2D image? When I was a kid, I used to look at the TV from the side to try and see what's around the corner. But sadly for little Mitch, that never worked. But 20 years later, I've discovered a way to look behind the scenes. Right now you're looking at every pixel that's part of the final image, and you can see that they actually have a 3D position. But you'd never know when looking from the front. Since these pixels have 3D positions, that means we can add 3D beams of light to this scene. To do this, we'll create a line between each pixel and our camera. Then we'll test points along this line, and if they're in sunlight, we'll draw a transparent, sun-coloured pixel there. When we look at this from the front, we can see these streaks of light. As the day passes, the angle of these beams will match the position of the sun. The only problem is, my graphics card is making a weird noise and is probably going to overheat. We can speed this up by choosing less points along each line. But that doesn't look as good. So let's use a third approach that renders 70 times quicker. I learned this technique from the game Among Trees. It places these 2D planes in front of each window to create the illusion of 3D light. It works great until you know it's there. If we try to recreate this, we could render 2D planes on the edge of every window. This might look alright for a trailer video, but the illusion is broken when playing the game. We can improve this system by rendering these beams dynamically. Let's say we're in a clearing in a forest. We'll choose random positions and draw flat rectangles there. Then we'll apply this sun-coloured gradient to them. And lastly, we'll angle these planes towards the sun. If you don't look closely, this probably looks alright. But there's a few problems. This tree has a beam of light cutting right through the middle of it. And out here in the ocean, these beams of light shouldn't be rendered. For this approach to work, we need to only render beams of light at the edge of a shadow. To do this, we'll take 16 samples around each beam of light. Then the vertex shader will tally up how many of these samples are in sunlight. The beam should be brightest when half of them are in sunlight. It's easier to visualise this with a graph. When 8 samples are in sunlight, the beam will have 100% opacity. Then as the amount of samples decreases or increases, the opacity of the beam decreases. Now we can hide the beams that are completely in shadow or completely in sunlight. But when the trees start swaying in the wind, they flicker all over the place. We can reduce the flickering by taking more samples, but that slows everything down. A better solution would be to average the beam's opacity over time. But shaders aren't built for measuring averages. They convert data into triangles, write pixels to the screen, then forget they ever existed. Luckily, someone at the OpenGL team thought of this and came up with Vertex Transform Readback. This lets us save the data produced by the vertex shader into another buffer. In this case, the buffer stores the opacity of every vertex in every beam. Each beam is composed of six vertices, which is why each value is repeated six times. Now this is where we use shaders in a way that's not normal. The opacity is sent to both the fragment shader and the transform readback buffer. The CPU then reads this data and averages each beam's opacity over a second. The average values are then stored in a shader storage buffer object. This is a special buffer that we can store any kind of data in. The vertex shader will then read the averaged opacity from this SSBO and pass it to the fragment shader. The reason this isn't a typical shader setup is because the fragment shader completely ignores the opacity value. Instead, it uses the average opacity to render the beams. In the vertex shader, we'll first define our SSBO data at the top. Then we'll read the average opacity from it and send it to the fragment shader. Our beams of light will now fade in and out smoothly as the trees sway in the wind. This renders 70 times faster than the second approach and looks the same. 
You can run this demo and download the code from the video description. I optimized a different part of this engine up to 12,000 frames per second, which you can watch in this video on screen.